Bruce, you must have something really good too. Of course I do, it's Bruce Danielson, and I guess I'm here to entertain you too. This meeting of the Sioux Falls Charter Revision Commission will come to order. Um, at the meeting of the last, uh, the, excuse me, at our last meeting, there were minutes drafted. Those were circulated before the meeting. Everybody had a chance to review. Um, is there a motion to approve those minutes? I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of our meeting of December 11, 2019. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. The minutes are so approved. On our agenda, which was also circulated in advance of the meeting, there is nothing under old business, which will bring us to new business. The only item is A, Charter Revision Commission Draft Ballot and Summary, report by City Attorney Stacy Koistra. Mr. Koistra. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am here to present the summary report for the year. Uh, everyone has been provided copies of this, and I'm not one that's inclined to read that to people who I know are more than capable of reading. But I will highlight a few things for, for the public, anyone who may be watching. Um, you know, this year's uh, Charter Revision uh, Commission uh, started meeting in June of this last summer in 2019, uh, conducted a series of seven meetings. And uh, uh, now, of course, the Commission is prepared to deliver their proposed revisions uh, to city election authorities for placement on the upcoming April 14, 2020 ballot. Uh, during the course of this past uh, year of meetings, uh, the Commission reviewed and discussed each, each section of the city charter. Uh, the public was invited to attend, and some members of the public did avail themselves of that opportunity, and uh, input was received, and uh, that input was considered. Again, after extensive review, the, the Charter Revision Commission is advancing two proposed measures uh, following delivery and filing of those with the City Council and the City Clerk. They will be presented to the public for further consideration and ultimately to be voted on. Uh, the first proposal would add an eligibility requirement to Section 2.02B of the City Charter requiring candidates for district-specific council seats to be a resident of the district for a period of six months immediately prior to the election. Uh, the second proposal would ensure that the requirements set forth in Section 801D of the City Charter regarding voter initiation of proposed charter amendments are at all times at least as stringent as those set forth in the state constitution. This would satisfy state law, which requires that the uh, the requirements of city charter and ordinance be at least as stringent as those imposed by state law. Again, each of these proposed revisions will be presented in the form of charter amendments to city voters for their consideration in the upcoming city elections. With that, I'll uh, take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Koistra. Are there questions from the members of the commission uh, of Mr. Koistra on this report? Mr. Timian? Uh, if I could, it would, uh, the one item I, that I noticed is that the one we had that had the changes in red. Yes. Were much, easily under, under, much easier to understand what the change was <clears throat> than, in the, than in the ballot itself. No, understood, and, and we've presented both, and I think both uh, will be public, the proposed revision. We end up publishing both. Um, okay. But the final ballot will have what you see there. Any further questions? Seeing none, rather than delaying all public input until item five on the agenda, I will open it to public input on the Charter Revision Commission draft ballot and summary. Is there public input? All right, seeing none. Uh, we will need a motion to approve the two proposed 2020 charter amendments for the April 14, 2020 ballot. Do I have a motion? So moved. It's been moved by Commissioner Timian. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Politas. All those in, or any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion to approve those ballots, uh, ballot items, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Those two items will be placed on the April 14, 2020 municipal ballot. 
for consideration by the voters. <clears throat> that, is, that concludes new business. We now are now on to general public input. Do we have any general public input? Seeing none, we will close public input and move to open discussion of the commission. I'd like to start momentarily, if I could, by, um, as the chair, thanking my fellow commissioners. Um, in particular, I'd like to thank uh, Pauline Politis and Bob Timian for their service on the commission over the last four years, maybe more. I would say that I've definitely learned a huge amount from both of them and appreciate their mentorship of me while I was just a wee little uh, uh, entry onto the commission. Um, and I thank them for supporting my candidacy for chair. It's been an honor to serve with the both of them and regardless of what the future holds in terms of additional appointments or continuations on this commission, I really appreciate your hard work and insight. And then for Commissioners Hayek and Zalstra, I wanna thank both of you for bringing new energy and insight to the Charter Revision Commission. Uh, I can easily say that uh, I definitely learned a lot from the both of you as well and appreciate your uh, help and assistance. Um, and then I wanna thank the city staff uh, for their role, because really, in my opinion, while the commission uh, may be the ones who have the votes, I think the real hard work is, has been done by uh, Mr. Koistra, Ms. Hansel, Mr. Greco, and appreciate everything that they've done um, over the last year to help the Charter Revision Commission. So thank you very much. Any further comments, discussion from the commission? <clears throat> Mr. Timian. Uh, you've done a great job in your leadership, uh, Justin, and I would say it's been a pleasure to serve with everyone. And uh, I would echo the comments on the outstanding job of the city staff. Yeah. So thank you. Further discussions, comments? Ms. Hayek? Uh, just for information purposes, we have then one additional meeting to approve the minutes of this meeting, and that will occur in... January or uh, later January or do we meet again or, or are we done? What's Ms. the schedule? What we have done in the past is just had another short meeting um, usually within a few weeks of this one I don't think we sent it out too far in advance and just to approve the minutes and to kind of wrap things up that's all we did at that meeting um, so we could schedule it in January if that's convenient otherwise it, there's no reason why it couldn't be later Thank you. As a general matter, I would ask, uh, the last time that the Charter Revision Commission adjourned, before, so it would have been two years ago, I believe, we had one outstanding item that we were considering. And by outstanding, I mean pending. I'm making no comment on the merits of that. <laughs> it had to do with the way in which the Charter addresses the salary of city council members and the mayor. And we agreed that we would meet later in the year after the municipal election to take additional evidence and further consider that item. Are there any items that have been brought before the commission during this term that are still pending that the members of the commission would like further information on and that would merit a meeting sometime after the election to take additional evidence or give the public additional opportunity to discuss and for us to consider that item? Okay, um, then I would propose that we try and set a meeting sometime in the next two to three months to consider the minutes of this meeting and wrap up. What about, and my schedule is uh, for the legislative session have to be in peer for most of the time. So um, I'm gonna, just going to throw out some dates. Um, January 31 or Monday, February 3? Uh. My schedule, if we can call in for the meeting, I could do that on the 31st, or on the 3rd, excuse me. And I think as a rule, we had decided at the outset that we, it is fine for members of this commission to call in for meetings and to vote by phone. And Mr. Chair, if yes. I can, there is uh, city council meetings have been moved from Tuesday the 4th to Monday the 3rd. 
Okay. So we'll have a, you could certainly do it earlier, but they'll have their first meeting at 4 p.m. that afternoon. Perfect, thank you. 31st of January? I will be gone the 31st on a military obligation. I'm, I'm not available that day. No, 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 that no. is just to approve the minutes. It's gonna be a very brief meeting. So at 3.30 on the, on the 3rd, does that work? 3.30 p.m., February 3rd. Could we make it 3 p.m.? Yes. For this one? Y 3, yep. And it's all right to call in. Well, I'll set up a conference line and get that taken care of. Mr. Chair, I would be able to do it for sure by phone, possibly in person. And we could discuss other options as well later in February or even into March, if that would be better for everyone. 3 p.m. Yep, 3 p.m. Monday, February 3. With apologies as we all update our electronic calendars. Is there a further discussion or any items for consideration by the commission? All right, Mr. Zalstra. Mr. Chairman, uh, I know after the departure of the institutional memory, which is going to be very hard for the mayor to re and the council to replace uh, with Ms. Paletta, pardon me, uh, for Pauline's, Commissioner Pauline's uh, history, including the uh, forming and adoption of the charter has been invaluable, certainly to me and I think to the whole group. And Commissioner Timian's long service and involvement has also been very helpful. But once the uh, mayor and the council appoint replacements for them, do we, uh, is it your intention as a chair to call a, meet, uh, a meeting somewhere fairly expeditiously after that to orient ourselves to what our roles and uh, tasks going ahead are and potentially at that point to talk about any other items of information as, as you know one of the items we did not pursue was the one that had been brought to us by uh, Council Member Brecky about the uh, ongoing strategic planning, putting that in, and I think there was some encouragement by you as well as some of the rest of us to return with that. I, I think it not being an election year, we might have more time to reflect on a few of those things but it wouldn't make much sense to do that until the, the new members are appointed. But is that your intention to call a meeting or? Uh... Generally, unless we have a, an item pending like we did when we closed our last session 2018, the beginning of 2018, uh, unless we have an item that's hanging over, <clears throat> we do not call a meeting during a non-election year. Typically we start in the early spring of an election year and hold as many meetings as we need in the lead up to putting or not putting things on the ballot. So for the next one, it would be 2022. Um, I'm fine if the commission would like to call a meeting sometime um, yet in 2020 after the new commissioners are appointed, whether that's Ms. Politis and Mr. Timian or not. No, okay. <clears throat> oh, there's term limits. Okay, thank you. Um, so with the new commissioners, I'm fine with doing that. Um, otherwise, I would propose that, um, you know, if, if one of the members would like to meet, then they can contact me or the city attorney's office and we can figure something out. Um, but then I would encourage Ms. Brecky or anyone else um, to come back and, and we can start meeting again in the beginning of 2022. <laughs> Correct, thank you, 2021. <laughs> Yes. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair, I, one of the things we should discuss, just as a last sort of house cleaning measure, is who will present the report to the council from the commission. Um, oh, I, not I can it. do that. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Unless 
the nope. city attorney typically does that, then I'm happy to. I think history says that the, the chair does, with yeah. the exception of particularly contentious years, maybe I think the city attorney's taken it, but I don't think this qualifies <laughs> this year, so. Do we have a, when would, when would the preferred meeting of the council be? That's, that's the city clerk. It would have to be either, I would recommend either January 21st, February 3rd, or um, February 11th. And the 11th is the latest that could be reported to the council. So January 21st okay. or February 3rd or February 11th. February 3rd sounds excellent. All right. I'll hang around. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> You should even have minutes approved by that time. Yes, that's true. We'll be all done. Any further discussion or items? All right, seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Timian, seconded by Commissioner Politis uh, to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Aye.